let's start with the new album. Indigo Dreams came out, uh, it says here came out on July 26th. This it's your tenth studio album. Describe the the what was the kind of the making of it? What what was the philosophy going into this album? What did you hope to to accomplish artistically, creatively with it with uh, Indigo Dreams? Um, boy, accomplish artistically, I'm not sure because you know we're always been a band that just kind of picks up their guitars and starts yelling in the microphone, and I think kind of all our records have been approached that way. <clears throat> this was kind of a, a lot of the stuff was worked on uh, the same time we were working on the record uh, Mr. Sad Clown, which was the one before it. But we had kind of gone in and, you know, found uh, some of the gems from that session and, and, and were reworking them. And then some of the new stuff we brought to it, too. But it was really about just bringing a little more up energy to the project because the record prior to it, Mr. Sad Clown, was more introspective and more of a down record. And uh, this one, Indigo Dreams, was about getting back to playing, you know, rock songs and more up-tempo, funner songs, things like that. What You kind of described a little bit of your approach to making the album. You just kind of, you know, go in and kind of rock out. Go into that a little more in-depth for, for those that kind of wonder how an album gets made. How, what, what is the, the kind of the Bodine's approach? What, 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 if, if you will, and you kind of describe that a little bit, but your approach, you go into the studio, you know, the songwriting process, the recording process, you're like, do you do it all in the studio? Do you kind of prep beforehand and go in? Kind of how do you guys do that? Well, I guess there's two different ways. The, the thing about Indigo Dreams was uh, I have a studio, but um, we, I just kind of played everything on the record myself because I was a drummer growing up, and now I play guitar and sing, and so... Uh, what ended up happening for the last four or five records was me just kind of, uh, Sam would come down, we'd kind of work on some ideas and then he'd leave and I would kind of play everything and, and then he'd kind of come back and sing on it. And, and that's typically how records were getting done for a lot of years. And that's how Indigo Dreams got done as well was just, uh, because I'm able to play everything I, I do because it was the best, cheapest kind of way to do a record and get it out. Mm -hmm. Um, I will say, though, that <laughs> we have started, uh, since Sam left the band, we have started on a new record that's coming out next summer, which is done in a different process, which entire, you know, you go into a studio with a different producer as a band, and you stand and you play and play and play together until you find something that really sounded great, you know, and you captured it on tape, per se, and... Uh, that's the way I prefer to make records. It's kind of hard when you're doing everything and playing everything to have a very good, you can't really step outside of it very well and say, is this good or not until you release it. And then by then it's too late to make any changes. So um, it was nice. It's nice that going forward, we have the other process, but it's also sometimes fun to go in and try and create everything. It's just a little bit harder. Talking with uh, Kurt Newman from Bodine's, and yeah, you mentioned the, the new studio album. And so, what what's kind of the the target? It says twenty twelve, but about but uh, is there some time during the year you're looking for the for a release? Yeah. Right now, the date we're looking for is May eighth, and uh, the record's been. I'm just doing finishing touches on a lot of the tracks right now. It'll hopefully it'll be mixed and done by the. January time and we can get it out and released by May or June at the latest but right now the date is May 8th so that's what we're shooting for any themes or are you still kind of taking that just go in and perform approach as far as uh, lyrical themes or is there any kind of trend with this yeah I think it's a little bit different you know there's been different subject because of the transition in the band and stuff there's been uh I think a lot of my writing has been geared for that for the last couple of years with the tension in the band and stuff. And it's a very American themed record. A lot of the stuff worked on for a couple of years where uh, I was trying to write more uh, just real roots American music again. And so several of the tracks are kind of very high end American sound. And we have a, a fiddle player I've been playing with for years. What? Well. What what changes have you seen in the in the music industry? And I know this is asked of a lot of artists and a lot of bands over, especially in the last five or ten years, as as, as you know, the big record labels have kind of you know they've got more dif more difficult to deal with you know, digital and and all the changes in the industry. What have you seen 
you, I mean, my gosh, you guys have been doing this for almost 30 years. How, or going, well, going way back about 30 years or so, what changes have you seen in the music industry, especially lately in terms of getting your music out promotionally and, you know, still a, a, achieving a kind of, kind of a, some gravitas in the industry? Yeah, well, you know, since, since uh, people started having computers make the record, it's, it's really changed things because... You know, if you buy a computer and it's got uh, an application like GarageBand or something in it, the music's already been played for you, and all you had to do was kind of like try to figure out some rhyme to put on top of it and then release it. So kind of like everybody and their cousin was able to put out a record, and, and when that happens, it's kind of like it, everything becomes oversaturated. There's so much going on with so many people that it becomes a real struggle for anybody to get heard because everybody's trying to get heard, and... and it was never like that uh, back in the early to late 80s when we started releasing music. You really had to earn your way by learning how to perform. And once you learned how to perform, you could go into a studio and then you would perform what you did onto tape. And if it was good enough, then a major label might pick it up and they would apply a lot of money to promotion and getting you heard and stuff. But there was uh, there were a lot of hurdles you had to get over and get past. Now with the way digital music has become, it, those hurdles aren't there anymore and everybody can kind of create a great sounding product even though they didn't really play anything on it. Um, it still sounds good and so they want to release it and but they can't really perform is the problem. And then when they go out to play, it's, that's where, you know, the trouble starts is that uh, I think the audience is a little disappointed because the performer's not up to the level of what the record was and things like that. And then. I think that's all kind of tumbled forward for a few years to now you have where music doesn't mean so much to people you know they don't want to pay for downloads and, and stuff like that like when i was a kid a record would last a whole summer you know you'd hear it everywhere the tom petty's and bruce springsteen's release records mm -hmm. and that was like the theme of the summer those records and they meant a lot in your life and stuff and when those bands were on tour it was a big deal and stuff but now it's just not like that because i think because everyone releases these other records but it, they've lost the art of performing and so Bodines have always tried to keep focused on that that you do something that you do your way and that makes you unique and special you know or, or you try to be at least and then you have something and it's not about sounding great on the record as much as it is sounding great when you go to somebody's town and play it talking with Kurt Newman from Bodine. So we talked about the music industry changes. Well, and you, you've referenced, this, referenced it already, the change in the band with uh, Sam Lanis leaving uh, earlier this year. So it's been just a few months, but what what is the change like in the band? What's the dynamic change, musical change, interpersonal change? I mean, that, I mean that's a significant change for, for the Bodines. What is yeah. it like? Well, uh, it's different. You know, it's, uh, you know, I was luckily throughout the years, a lot of my songs were kind of chosen as singles where I was singing on them. So, uh, you know, I have a lot, a lot of songs to be able to play for people that are still their favorites and stuff. And, and, you know, we're working with, it's, it'll never be exactly what it was, but it, it, what we're trying to do is still make it incredibly entertaining. Um, I had mentioned earlier about having the fiddle player and stuff like that. I have Michael Ramos, who is the keyboard accordion player, has been with us since the 80s, and he's doing a lot of singing. And I brought in another guitar player I've played with down here in Austin before, who's uh, also singing and playing guitar. And so we're able to do a lot of songs that we couldn't have done years ago, um, because on all the records, I would play all the guitars. And so when we would go out to play, a lot of times those parts couldn't be reproduced. Well, now, now they can, and so it's kind of liberating for me to be able to go out and do a lot of that stuff and, and uh, play a lot of songs we wouldn't have played before as well as we have all this new stuff to play for people, which is really high-energy stuff. And when you put that all together and you add the fiddle player, it's a pretty cool sound. And uh, we're just kind of reintroducing ourselves to people, and uh, so far it's been a great response. Everywhere we go, people, the, the high energy of the Bodines has always been there. Because my music, I've always been trying to push that that envelope with the high energy performances. So it's been good. People have been really supportive, and it's been liberating in many ways. And 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 I like that. And I think we took the other way with Bodines as far as we could possibly take for people. We just couldn't 
go on with it anymore. And so I hope people will like the new kind of sound, even though I think it's really the classic sound that's been there for a lot of years. And that's something people can compare in, in, in Eau Claire, in the Chippewa Valley. Those were at the last Bodine show. I mean, there, there's a direct comparison, right? They'll, there we'll have the opportunity. Uh, speaking of your, your performances, I want to know what, what is like one or two songs that you really like to perform that maybe you know, most either fans wouldn't know about or people that, that conventionally, you know, kind of follow the Bodines wouldn't know about, but that you, I mean, if you had the choice, you'd perform them every night. Yeah. Well, there were a couple songs. There was a song on, uh, uh, was it our second record or third record? One of the two. Um, and it's called Tied Down and Chain, and it's a really high-energy rocking song that we never were able to play before. Um, and I love, we've, we've started playing that one now every every show, which is a lot of fun, and, and it's super energy rocking song. Um, there's also a couple of the new tracks, which we've been playing for a long time, but... Um, it's nice to kind of come out to an audience and play them a couple of things that they maybe don't know, but the songs are so immediate that they can grab onto it and really get into it right away. That's That's been extremely liberating as well. Um, there was another one called Pick Up the Pieces, and we've been doing things like that that we never, ever could really pull off years earlier. And, and also now, with a lot of the other stuff, we're able to kind of reinvent them too. So you kind of bring new energy to all the songs you are playing. And, and I think that's why everything's been getting such a good response when we go out and play is that we know from so many years, but they've got a new energy to them. And, and that makes them exciting to, to watch somebody perform. And of course, there's all the new music as well. A couple questions on your on songs from the new album and performing them. One, uh, a two-part question. First off, how many songs from the new album are you performing on, on your shows? And number two, what is, and I know that you've got all these brand new songs, but which one is your favorite from the new album to perform? Um, the, the favorite to perform from Indigo Dream right now is a song called How Can We, which is the latest kind of single that's gone to radio. It's, it's a classic, it's a classic kind of sound, big, big singing big beat and uh what i call my 80 20 theory which is uh i'll just have people at the show and say, come on and see us mm-hmm. <laughs> um we've also been performing a blow in my mind which is the lead track on the record which is another high energy rock and roll and that kind of rock and roll with some more and then I like to throw in one of the new songs from the record we're working on. Uh, we've been playing a song called Fly Away and a song called American, which are two really old, uh, great American songs. Nice. We'll get a little bit of a preview of what's coming up in, in 2012 as well. Uh, going back over your albums, going back, I mean, you've had albums hidden, hidden the top 200 since 1986. What is your favorite Bodine's album? Um... That's, that's kind of tough, but I've always really liked Go Slow Down a lot. I, I, well, again, I played a lot of the stuff on it. That's where I really started playing drums and guitars and basses and singing and stuff. And uh, really a homemade kind of record. And uh, I don't know, I just felt like uh, we were in a really good place when we made that record. And I think you could, it's a very warm record. I also really, really love uh, the live one, Joe Dirt Car a lot. Hmm. Um, you know, it's just got all kinds of stuff on it. I think that's where, how we were represented best. And then as a writer, as a songwriter, your the record you're working on is always kind of your favorite, too. So I'll be looking forward to people's response to the, the record that comes next year. But those would really be my favorite right now. Should be very interesting. Well, final question. You're, you're coming up to Eau Claire. You've been here before. Uh, what's... What, I don't know if you get a chance to really check out the community at all, check out any of the restaurants or anything like that, but is there anything about the Eau Claire area, Chippewa Valley, western Wisconsin? I mean, I'm, obviously you guys are from Waukesha, so you're from the state, but, but is there anything in, in the Eau Claire area that you kind of look forward to checking out or that's kind of struck you as, you as you come here that you kind of noticed? Well, last year <laughs> when we came there, it was driving through snowbanks and closed roads just trying to get from the hotel to the theater and um, that's what really sticks in my mind right now. I understand we don't have snow right now but I can't help but think about the, the effort it took just to get to the show and the snowbanks and that kind of weather. Um, 
you know, I like when we get to go there in the summer, too, because it's always gorgeous. You know, it's the time of year to be there. But uh, I keep thinking about last season's show, and I'm hoping we're going to have one so people can come out and see it. Mm-hmm. And we and we should have more people able able to come out around any snow because uh, well we're, right now forecast looking dry I know we're looking way out uh, nine days right now as of the interview but but I can tell you the forecast around here is looking totally dry yeah we'll end up with a brown Christmas but we we don't have huge snow banks we don't have any twenty two inch snowfalls in the forecast so uh, it it'll look a little different but we should have plenty of people showing up for the show so once again it's uh, December 29th. any final uh, things you want to tell people in, in anticipation of the concert that they should be looking forward to. Out to help help me sing sing the songs and come on out to have a, a good time to fun to move and have some fun you know we love it when people are moving and getting into the shows that's why we do it you know is is, is we want to have fun with you so come on out and have a rocking night.